This is the day that the Lord has made. Who we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Today we continue in our devotional series looking at the book of Genesis. Today looking at Genesis chapter number 4 from verse 17 to verse 20 to verse 26. Um, when I was growing up, I remember my parents and also the, the elders that I grew amongst used to encourage me to say, if you ever get lost on your journey or if you ever get lost in your life, just go back to the starting point and recenter and refocus and reset your bearings, then recalibrate and just start from there. You will then find your way. There's no better time for us just to be looking at Genesis, uh, resetting our minds, um, considering the world that we are in today, the challenges that we are facing, uh, the unprecedented moments that we are in currently. Uh, Genesis just gives us the context that as we look at that and we see the journey that we have traveled, we we'll begin to understand and appreciate the fullness of the grace and the truth that Jesus has attained for us in our lives. So we pick up from Genesis 4.17 from the previous conversation between God and, and Cain after Cain had brutally murdered his own brother. I've divided this into, into two sections. So the first section is looking from verse 17 to verse 24, just at the life and the family of Cain. Then the second section looking at the birth of Seth, that's from verse 25 to verse 26. And in all this, I think the big idea that I want us to see is that God is at work even in dark times by his grace and his mercies. When we look at, 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 at the first section from verse 17 and 18, what we see, we see Cain has now left the presence of God. He is um, just on his own and um, living his own life. And what we see, so he builds a city. The city is named after his own son. Um, we see verse 19 to 22, this start already of bygamy, two wives are being married. We see as well the advancement that begins to happen. They become tensemen and headsmen. We see musicians. We see the emergence as well of smiths and craftsmen. We see the emergence as well of artisans um, who are good and skilled in working with bronze and iron. What we see, we see also verse 23 and 24. Utterly abhorrible, um, Lamech boasts in committing murder, he boasts in violence to the extent of just bragging of how he can do that and still God shows him mercy. He goes to the extent of says, if Cain is avenged sevenfold as the Lord said he would, then Lamech will be avenged seventy-sevenfold. Such kind of a, of a, of a world and, and, and way of living. But when we look at our lives today, the world today prides itself in technological advancement, in cultural advances, in murder, in violence, in brutality, um, enmity. But when you look at all this, one of the fundamental things that you see is all these things are being done without a reference, without the God being the reference point to it. But what we do we see? We also see God extending his common message to all. But the key learning that we then need to realize is though they were advancing culturally, though they were advancing in their technology, in their way that we see here, because we begin to see civilization, which we read in our history books, which we read everywhere else, but it all started here. There's nothing new in this world. But what we see is that God still extends his common message to, to, to these people, regardless of them being out of his presence. But what is important is as much as God extends his common message, I want us to look at the, at, at the book of um, Titus. When you look at Titus chapter number 2, verse number 11 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly immoral desires and to live sensible, upright and godly lives, lives with a purpose that reflect the spiritual maturity in this present age, awaiting and confidently expecting the fulfillment of blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Christ Jesus. My question for you is, as much as you might be experiencing the common message, but have you taken advantage of the grace of God that has appeared that leads to salvation? If not, reflect on this and ask God just to extend that grace to you and you just receive it. When we then look at uh, verse 25 to 26, what we see, we see the birth of Seth. We see people beginning to call on, 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 on God. What does this tell us? Dark times are never all dark there is hope there. Regardless of death and the way of Cain, God provides another, another sunset through whom salvation to all men will find its way. Guess what? 
men also began to call on the Lord. So whilst there are stories and activities that bring fear, chaos and disorder, anxiety, but there is a greater story, which is the story of Christ. There is hope in Christ. And what is that hope? Remember, for you and me, Christ in us is the hope of glory. So Christ in you is the hope of glory. How do you apply that even into your own life? Why don't you look with me from the book of uh, Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8. Finally, believers, what is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things, center your mind on them, and implant them in your heart.